You're listening to The Diarist, a Red Couch Black Dog production. Episode 7, The Ways of Passion, Part 2. Welcome, it's the happy couple. The missus asks me every night, have they married yet? Ha <laughs> ha, Salvatore. Hey, I'm sure I'm ten times more eager. Hey, you know, I'm sure Andrea would be happy to send you two an invitation to the reception, won't you, darling? I mean, how about you write your address on the check before we go? Wouldn't that be nice, Andrea? May I have a cocktail? Well, why don't we get a bottle of the Cabernet? One bottle of Cabernet? No. I'd like to start with an old-fashioned. An old-fashioned? Since when do you drink hard liquor, Andrea? Yes, that's what I would like. Oh, nerves! Well, um, in that case, I'll have a Manhattan. Very good. I'll have those right out. Uh, darling, you're kind of scaring me. Is that is that it? Is it just nerves? We need to talk, Stephen. What is it? You know, you're, you're really scaring me. I want to just get this out. First, I'd like to have a drink. Are you calling it off? One of Manhattan and an old fashioned for the lady. Oh, uh, thank you. May I take your order? Uh, yes, what are you having, darling? I'm not hungry. I'll have the filet mignon, and the lady will have the broiled lobster tail. We'll start with marinated herring and two tossed salads. I just said I wasn't hungry. How would you like your steak or cooked, sir? Uh, medium, please. Very well, that's a broiled lobster. And I'll have another old fashioned. And an ashtray, please. Andrea? Yes, Mama. I'll put your order through. You know, if you're trying to embarrass me, you're doing a good job. What the hell has gotten into you? The herring, an old fashioned, and an ashtray. Thank you. Uh, very well, thank you. Are you having second thoughts? To be straight with you, yes. Well, more aptly, I've changed my mind. About the drink? No. About you. My God. Why are you acting this way? It wasn't two days ago that we danced cheek to cheek at the Harbor Club. The Harbor Club? That's just it. Why don't you marry Mother? What has gotten into you? Has it occurred to you that this life, this future is bleak? It's nothing to celebrate. Why would I want to end up like Mother? No one said you had to. You can do whatever you want. I'm in love with you. I'll be a slave. Is that how you see me? A slave master? Well, what is a husband anyway? Oh, I'm not following you. This is is all out of the blue. See, that's just it. You've allowed yourself to be blinded by mother and your mother. The club, all of it. Why would I want to invest in a marriage like I would a set of silverware? With everyone looking on, plotting my future? Oh, I, I see what's happening. It's all right. Just calm down. I love you, Andrea. This isn't a game to me. I want a wife like you. Someone to be my friend first and foremost. We're friends, aren't we? I thought we were traversing this absurdity together. I want to cut this off. I want it to be fast and surgical. A month before the wedding, the the cakes, dresses, flowers, all selected, the deposit at the Harbor Club? Oh, if I hear Harbor Club again, I swear I'll die. If I look at another girl like Sarah McGinnis, I think I'll vomit. Please, lower your voice. What is it you want? Do you you want to elope? I'll leave with you right now. Our parents be damned. You would? Of course. Don't you know that? Look, let's leave now. Drive to some overnight chapel, go to Niagara Falls. It does sound lovely. 
This is our life, Andrea. I'll go wherever you want. We'll design our future together. I wish it were that simple. No, oh, darling, don't you know how much I love you? I'm afraid I've gone and ruined everything. Why? Because you don't want to endure any of this nonsense from our mothers any longer? I, I'm glad you said something. I, I thought I'd die. It's too late. Is, is there something you want to tell me? I've betrayed you. What are you talking about? How? Or, I've lied to you, rather. What do you mean? I'm not in love with you. I've never been in love with you. Is that really true? Yes, it's true. I don't love you. I don't want to marry you. What a lobster tail for Larry and a filet mignon with two tossed salads. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, Salvatore. We're gonna have to take the check. So, something's come up. No, oh, no problem. Would it really be all right for me to leave my address for the invitation? I'm sorry, my fiance just confessed she doesn't love me. Isn't that right, Andrea? Yes. And there will be no wedding. Isn't that correct? Yes. We're calling it off. There you have it. Just the check, please. Hayes residence? Is Mr. Hayes available? Andrea, my goodness, it's one in the morning. Are you all right? I'll take the call in my office, Elizabeth. Yes, sir. Darling, is it done? Yes. Are you terribly heartbroken? No. No? Not at all. I hope it wasn't a mistake. Why would it be? How could it be? God, Andrea, I'm so in love with you. Richard, I'm in love with you too. I miss you already. Now that I know our feelings are mutual, and after this afternoon... When I made love to you. Yes, after you made love to me. It seems as if I can feel you right here with me. The memory of your touch is that strong. I've never felt like this before. Honestly? I've never been in a situation that I can't stop thinking or talking about. Every minute with you, I'm part happy and part dreading it ending. I know we said we were going to take a few days for things to settle, but... What is it? Would you come to me tonight? I know it's complicated. How about we stay on the phone together, just like this? But I want to feel you next to me. I love the sound of your voice, Andrea. Are you ready for sleep? No, I'm in the front room, on the couch by the telephone table. I couldn't sleep. I had to hear your voice. Richard, does Margaret mind terribly? No. How can she not? She doesn't. Because she's not well? I promise I'll tell you all of it, all right? But right now, I want to talk with you. I want to get to know you, to hear your voice. So there is a story to tell? Yes. But rest assured, Margaret doesn't even care, and never will. I believe you. Can you get comfortable there on the couch? Do you think you can fall asleep to my voice? I love your voice, too. Can you believe it? Believe what? That we're madly in love with one another. Here we are suddenly talking on the telephone. 
I feel as if I know you. Yes, I believe it. Isn't it crazy how selfish love is? Our feelings? Andrea? Yes? What is it? Tell me about Paris, the summer you spent there. Paris? Yes, how old were you? I was 17. Oh, I thought I was so grown up. I had a complete set of Samsonite luggage. Brand new. It was pink marbled. It was lovely, but you can imagine I didn't convince anyone I was a bohemian. <laughs> no, I, I guess not. <laughs> Would you believe my mother, who was positively against the whole idea, bought me an entire new wardrobe? And not just any Neiman Marcus outfits. She studied French Vogue and had several very chic outfits made just for me. I'll bet you were breathtaking. <laughs> By the time I got on the plane, I had four large suitcases full. Well, you were there for that whole summer, weren't you? <laughs> Are you having a cigarette? Why? Do you mind? Don't be silly. I think I'll have one, too. I thought your mother taught you not to smoke in front of a man. Well, I'm an ad man, remember? You are not an ad man, Andrea. You are a beautiful, perfect female specimen. Well, I'm a perfect specimen who is getting a cigarette. I'll be back in a moment. Besides, you said yourself I'm a good ad man. Yes, darling. You're good at advertising. I hope I haven't hooked you on a bad habit. What, smoking? Oh, that's right. Don't be silly. Don't you know even nice girls sneak cigarettes when their favorite beau's not looking? Is that what I am now, your favorite beau? Well, aren't you? What, your favorite beau? Yes. That's for you to decide. Well, you are. That's nice to hear. I don't think I've ever had such a lovely sweetheart. Is that so? Yes, it is. So where were we? Aren't you tired? It's almost two o'clock. I'm not at all. Are you? No. If you come over, I'll let you sleep as late as you want, and I'd make you a fabulous breakfast. You would? What would you bring me? Belgian waffles. That sounds delicious. Bacon, coffee, fresh strawberries. It's too late. All right. I won't ask again. At least not tonight. But I'm not tired. What were we talking about? Oh, yes, you were telling me about your less lovely sweethearts. No, darling. You were telling me about your summer in Paris. <laughs> you were a painter. Did you ever spend time in Paris? Well, not by choice and not for pleasure. The war? Tell me, darling. This is getting altogether too serious. Oh, so you would like me to entertain you? That's right. I was a young American girl with four suitcases full of very spectacular outfits. I was playing a part, Richard. I've been playing a part my entire life. Until now. What do you mean? Mother. Oh, I'm sure every girl finds her mother overbearing at times, but my mother's control over my life has been a preoccupation. I've been living in a very narrow orbit around her all these years. I was her little doll. She's always dressed me and had me play out her wishes. I'd like to say to fulfill her own broken dreams, but it seems to me she has everything she wants. What will she do now? How will she react now that you've made up your own mind? I fear the worst. <laughs> but it's time. Don't you think it's time for me to become who I'm supposed to be? Darling, of course I do. So, were there friends in Paris? Other girls? Did you fit in with artists? <laughs> What do you think? I don't know. That's why I asked. You're a popular girl in the office. Well, being so far from mother, other than the nightly phone calls, allowed me to rebel a little. How so? <laughs> I forgot all about the art school. Quit. And instead went to French bakeries, drank espresso, ate pastries, and got fat. <laughs> you didn't. I can't imagine you fat. <laughs> well, fat enough that mother's wardrobe didn't fit. I bought my own clothes for the first time in my life. What became of that girl? <laughs> she returned to her dress size, put mother's clothes back on, and went to Catherine Gibbs Secretarial School. And walked into my life. Yes. Walked into your life. You sound sleepy. 
Are you tired, darling? No, I love talking. I can hear it in your voice. I wish we could fall asleep like this. It's as if I found my best friend and now I want to tell you everything. How about I come over for that breakfast you promised? Really? Yes. I'll be there at nine. Then I'd like to take you to Coney Island, if you're free. Coney Island? Yes, I would love to go. I'm afraid I won't be able to sleep from the excitement. Get your sleep, darling. I want you as beautiful as always. All right, I will then. Good night, darling. I love you. I still have a photograph of us at Coney Island. I didn't keep the ones of me in my swimsuit. But the one in the photo booth? I have that one right here with me in my diary. The beach was flooded with people. Still, after the Ferris wheel and the roller coaster, we walked out into the sea, hand in hand. We swam out far, over our heads. Isn't that how I felt? I was in over my head. And we drifted back towards shore, reached the sand below. I kept my arms around him. The cool water and the hot sun enveloping us. I loved him. I believed he loved me, too. I'm sure he did. And the rest of it. (laughs) I knew that next day, Mother would call. She'd likely disown me. Actually, I had no idea what she would do, but I knew she would be irate, maybe vicious. I knew she would never forgive me. I also considered Stephen and whether he was really any kind of man at all. After all, it seemed he wanted what Mother wanted, what the world wanted. He was trying to paint a picture that would imprison me. It would be beautiful and impressionistic. I would have a smile, painted by Stephen, one that flaunted his success. But the real me, whoever she was, she would blur like the palette of a Monet. I would be nothing but paint strokes that from a distance looked beautiful, But up close, indiscernible. 